us a little bit about your practice. Hi, yes, um, my name's Cathy Leach. I'm a partner at Owen Mitchell in Manchester and I specialise in acting for people who've had really terrible injuries, brain injuries and particularly spinal cord injury. That's where I kind of made my name, I suppose. And so you must come across a lot of expert witnesses. What, what sort of experts do you come across? Well, all sorts really. We have, you might have a liability expert, like a reconstruction engineer or a, a con consulting engineer or some specific expert like in adventure activity or whatever is it, swimming pools. Um, might have an expert on causation, a medical expert on how the injuries occurred, but mostly we'll always have quantum experts on how much compensation the sure. person's going to need for their whole life. So, so there's so, lots of those. So what do you look for when you're selecting the right expert? Well, it's a combination of things, clearly. There's the need to know that they are an expert, they've got to be good at what they say they know, um, and be an expert on paper as well as doing it in real life. Um, they need to be articulate and prepared to look carefully at the information that they've been sent so they tailor their opinion to the case. Um, my particular sort of thing I need to consider is that we get one bite of the cherry for compensation for very seriously injured people. They might be very young but it's got to last a lifetime. lifetime yes. So they need to pay attention to every single era of that person's life and what their needs might be if it's a quantum expert. Well, and then, you, just um, sorry to interrupt you, Catherine, but ha they're all good qualities, but how do you do that when you, you've got an expert you haven't used before? How would you find out whether they had these qualities? Well, what I've done when that arises, if it's a sort of an unusual say, like liability yeah, sure. scenario where there's something really unusual that I've not come across before, um, I'll ask colleagues, I'll ask competitors, I'll ask defendants, solicitors I know, and I'll look up court decisions and see which experts might have been accepted or criticised if it's something unusual like... So a bit of due diligence, you're yes, actually looking yeah. at what they've done in the past. Yeah. They, because a liability expert, win or lose, that rests on that person's shoulders. And I mean, their opinion at the end of the day is very, very important. But how they give the opinion and how they operate is really critical too. So there is that taken for granted almost their technical expertise. It's the way that they actually become an expert witness is important. Yes. The understanding of the law, giving evidence, writing a report, etc. Yes, but I don't gloss over the technical expertise either. I think. Um, you know, for example, with an engineer, there's so many different engineers, they're not all the same, they're not all expert at everything, and you do have to make sure they are the right person for that job. Although many good experts will tell you if they're not before they've actually done, done no, the you report. Need to know that yeah. first after, don't you? Yeah. Do you do any sort of informal interviewing on the phone or chatting Yeah, a little first? bit. A little bit. Um, quite often have a preliminary chat. Um, just to ascertain what work they've done and what experience they've had and whether they are the right person for the job. And also because <coughs> experts, particularly if you have worked with them before, I might have a chat to them on the phone to see whether in the circumstances of a particular case um, it's a complete non-starter. Sure, you want or, to know Or just on, get a sort yeah. of a bit of a Feel sense a of how things might pan out, yeah. What do you do if in a conference with a council you think, oh my God, I don't think they're going to be any good? or is that Well, that has happened, and it's horrible. It's really, really horrible. And um, if I'm thinking it, then the barrister's thinking it too. And sometimes you have to ditch if you can. It's not always easy. Um, yeah, there's not much you can do if, if you end up having someone who's no good. And finally, about cost budgeting, are you finding them good at this or bad at this? Or? The courts. Um, no, yep, the courts and the experts. Well, I was just discussing that with some experts a little while ago. I think it's a bit of a dark art. I think it's really very hard for everybody concerned because we're no longer looking at reasonable costs. We're just looking at proportionate costs, which mm. actually means it doesn't matter how you do the job, doesn't matter if it's good or bad, yeah. not necessarily going to pay you for it. So um, the system is awful to work within. And the only thing we can do is just really communicate well with our experts, both before we go through the budgeting process and as it's going along. And also make sure that um, if you're going to have a shortfall, you know from the outset how that's going to be dealt with that between works, yeah. the expert and ourselves and the client and have a system that's going to be no shocks to anybody at the end of the day. Well, Catherine, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you.